Welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech and my series of exam question compilation videos on key topics you might still be struggling with. This particular video covers quadratic equations. I've taken related questions from my past paper walkthroughs and given them to you here back to back. This series is intended for the last few weeks of your revision and my advice is to go through all the practice papers and past papers before you look at these or the compilation videos will be the mathematical equivalent of endgame spoilers for you. Having already worked through all the practice papers, these compilation videos will give you a deep dive on topics you are still finding challenging, give you more of an overview, helping you recognise command words, identify key features and strategies, building your confidence and helping you apply these techniques for future papers. If you find it helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, it will really help me out. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, why not do that now? I'll be making lots of these compilations over the next couple of weeks, and you'll get notified of these as soon as I upload them. Right, let's get into it. Now, the secret of exam success is to be able to uh, correctly decode the command words the examiner is asking of you. So you've got two words here, factorize fully. Now factorize is math speak for putting brackets in and fully oops and fully is well it's just signposts that there are more than one factor to find. So if you ever see the word factorize fully it means that there are more than one factor to find. So here if I've got nine A squared and six A when I factorize, I'm looking for common factors between those two terms. So clearly, both of them have an A in them. So I've got an A here and an A here. So they have an A in common. But the number part as well, the, the 9 and the 6 are both in the 3 times table. So I have a second factor of a 3. So I'm going to take out the common factors and put it at the front. So 3 is common because it goes into 9 and 6. And a is common because it goes into a and a squared. And then I open a pair of brackets and then inside the brackets are the bits that aren't in common between the two terms. What do I need to multiply with 3a to get 9a squared? Well, 3 times 3 is 9. And a times a is a squared. So I've got to have, to have a 3a there. And I'm going to have a minus sign in the middle to match that one in the expression. And then I have to work out 3a times what is 6a. Well, 3a times 2 is 6a. Okay, that's the answer. So I factorized it by putting brackets in, and I factorized it fully because I've got both the, fact, both the common factors out. Question 27b. Solve x squared minus 12x plus 20 is equal to 0. Okay, so we've got a quadratic equation in x here. It's set equal to 0. Now, in order to solve these, as it's asking, you need to first factorize it into uh, two brackets like this and then equate each bracket to zero and find out what the value of x makes that true. Okay, so we need to factorize it first. Now we need to come up with, uh, well, we're gonna have, we've got x squared to start with at the start here, haven't we? So, so to get x squared, I'm gonna have to have an x and an x here. Now the next thing to look at is this positive 20 at the end. That tells me my two numbers multiply together to give me 20. Uh, but they add together to give us this number in the middle, which is minus 12. So it multiplies to give me a positive number, and it adds up to give me a negative number. Now that tells me that both of these signs are negative. Because uh, a negative times a negative is a positive, but when I add two negative numbers together, I'm going to get a negative number. Okay, now the next step is to work out what are the factor pairs of 20, this number here. Okay, so the number 20, uh, well, we've got uh, 20 and 1 multiplied together to give you 20. Or we could have 10 and 2, 10 times 2 is 20, or we could have 5 and 4. 5 times 4 is 20. Now these are all going to be negative numbers. Uh, because we already know there's going to be two negatives. Uh, and now which pair is going to add up to get to, to, together to give us negative 12? It's going to be that one there, isn't it? So it's going to be x minus 10, x minus 2. So the negative 10 times the negative 2 is going to give me the positive 20, 
and the negative 10 plus the negative 2 is going to give me negative 12 in the middle. Okay, so if I've got two things multiplied together to be and that equals 0, we know that one of the things must be 0 to start with. So either x minus 10 is equal to 0, which means x is equal to 10, or we know that x minus 2 is equal to 0, in which case x is equal to 2. So then the answer is x equals 10 or x equals 2. Two solutions. Solve x squared equals 30.25. Now you might be tempted to just to jump straight in and square root 30.25 and get your solution. Uh, but don't forget that when you square root there are two possible solutions, plus or minus, which is why there are two marks here. Uh, so root Thirty point two five is equal to five point five. So x equals plus or minus five point five. Expand and simplify x plus five, x minus four. Okay, so we've got two brackets we're going to multiply out. So that times that, that times that, that times that, that times that. That's going to give me x squared plus five x minus four x minus twenty. Collecting like terms in the middle, got two terms in x here, 5x take away 4x is x, so the final solution is x squared plus x minus 20. Okay, B says solve x minus 8, x plus 2, oh, x plus 7 is equal to 0. Now, if two things multiplied together give you 0, it must mean that one of the two things was 0 to start with, so either x minus 8 is equal to 0, or x plus 7 is equal to 0. Now if x minus 8 is equal to 0, then x is 8. And if x plus 7 is 0, then x is minus 7. 22a, factorise x squared minus 9x plus 20. So we've got a quadratic expression, and we want to factorise it. If it factorises, it will go into a double bracket like this, won't it? Uh, it starts with x squared, so I'm going to have an x and an x. Now I'm looking for a pair of numbers that multiply together to give me plus 20 and add up to negative 9. Okay, so thinking about the factor pairs of 20 first off. 20 you can get by multiplying 1 and 20 together, or 2 and 10, or 4 and 5. They're the factor pairs of 20. So we want one that adds up to negative 9. Okay, well, because uh, I've got a positive number at the end and a negative number in the middle, I must have minus and minus, so these must all be negative values. Negative, 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 negative. And which pair adds up to negative 9? It's this one here. So it's going to be minus 4, minus 5. X minus 4, X minus 5. Okay, 22b, solve x squared minus 9x plus 20 is equal to 0. Now that's the same expression as we've got above, so I can just factorise it the same way, x minus 4, x minus 5 is equal to 0. Now when you have two things that multiply together and give you 0, it means one of them must have been 0 to start with. So either x minus 4 is 0, in which case x is 4, or x minus 5 is 0, in which case x is 5. So my answer is x equals 4, x equals 5. Two solutions. Okay, question 18. Circle the two roots of 2x plus 3, uh, times 5x minus 2 is equal to 0. Well, you get the roots when the equation is equal to 0, and those two things multiplied together gives you 0. Must mean one or other than was 0 to start with. So either this first bracket here is equal to 0. So maybe 2x plus 3 is equal to 0, which means that 2x is minus 3 which means that x is minus 3 over 2. So that one there is a root. Or this bracket here is equal to 0. 
so 5x minus 2 is equal to 0 so 5x is 2x is equal to 2 fifths so that one there is the other root Question 15. We're told that E is equal to 25 plus 2P minus PQ, where E is 1 and Q equals P. Work out the values of P. Hmm. Well, if Q is equal to P, then we can replace Q with P. Uh, so let's rewrite that as 1 is equal to, because I've subbed in the value for E, which is 1, and that's 25 minus 2P minus P times P, so we replace Q with P. So that gives me 1 is equal to 25 minus 2P minus P squared. I'm going to bring everything over to the other side, so uh, my P squared term is positive. So that is going to give me P squared plus 2P, and 1 minus 25 is going to give me minus 24, and that's all equal to 0. All I've done is taken each term and I've moved it over the equal sign and changed the sign as it's gone over. Okay, so p squared plus 2p minus 24 is equal to 0. Can I factorise that? If I can, then I have a p and a p here. I'd be looking for factor pairs that multiply together to give me 24 and add to give me 2. So factor pairs are 24, 24 and 1. 12 and 2, 8 and 3, 6 and 4. Now, do any of those have a difference of 2? I've got a feeling it's going to be that pair there, isn't it? So it's going to be P plus 6, P minus 4. Give me 2 in the middle and minus 24 at the end. So equating each bracket to zero, I've got P is equal to minus six, or P is equal to positive four as my two solutions. Question 14, use the quadratic formula to solve five X squared plus 11 X minus two is equal to zero. Give your answer to two decimal places. Okay, well, what is the quadratic formula? That says that X is equal to minus B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Then we're going to sub the values in. That's going to be my value of a. This is my b and this is my c. Don't forget the signs belong to the, the letters as well. So minus b is going to be minus 11 plus or minus the square root of b squared 11 squared minus 4 times a which is 5 times c which is minus 2 all over 2 lots of 5. Okay let's see if we can simplify that down then. That's minus 11 plus or minus. Okay I've got 11 squared which is 121 and I need to subtract I've got a positive times positive times a negative, so that's going to be negative overall. So I'm subtracting the negative, which is the same as adding. 4 times 5 is 20, times 2 is 40, over 2 times 5, which is 10. 10. Okay, uh, so that's minus 11 plus or minus the root of 161 over 10. So now I can just type those into my calculator to get the two answers. So x is going to be equal to negative 11. Now often calculators have a different negative button than, than the, you can't use the subtract key, you've got to use the negative one. So negative 11 plus the root of 161 divide by 10 it's going to give me x equals 0 0.167 to two decimal places and then negative 11 minus square root of 161 divide by 10 give me minus 2.37 
Right, question 21. Solve 5x squared equals 10x plus 4. So I've got a quadratic equation. Now I'm told to give my answer to two decimal places. So this is immediately uh, telling me that this is going to be use of formula rather than factorising. Uh, so let's take our equation 5x squared equals 10x plus 4. Rearrange it to get everything on one side. 5x squared minus 10x minus 4 is equal to 0. So then this is my value of A. This is my value of B. And this is my value of C. So A is 5. B is minus 10. And C is minus 4. Okay, so what is x then when I use the formula x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a now I just need to carefully sub into this so minus b is minus negative 10 so minus negative 10 plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared minus 4 lots of a which is 5 times c which is minus 4 all over 2 lots of a which is 2 lots of 5 okay so what's that equal to i'm going to continue down here otherwise i'm going to run into my answer box negative minus 10 is positive 10 plus or minus the square root of minus 10 squared is positive 100. I've had minus, I've got minus times positive times positive times negative, so that minus is going to become a plus. And 4 times 5 is 20 times 4 is 80. So I'm going to get 100 plus 80 over 10. And just tidying that up now, that is root 180, then, isn't it? So 10 plus or minus the root of 180. All divided by 10 okay time to reach for the calculator so 10 plus root 180 equals divided by 10 equals that's 2.34 so x equals 2.34 or if I take away instead 10 subtract the root of 180 equals divide by 10 equals minus 0 0.34 so or x equals negative 0 0.34 they're my two solutions correct to two decimal places well i hope this video helped you get a better overview of the topic if it did give it a thumbs up you can find more exam question compilations over here for more past paper walkthroughs click down here if you want to visit my Amazon shop with my recommendations for calculators, revision guides and other maths related stuff, click down here. Good luck in your revision and in your exams and see you again next time.